okay today we will discuss about uh, splunk time picker okay we'll see how to add the time picker to a dashboard and we'll see how we can customize it so that you can remove some of its presets options from the time picker and as you know like splunk always deals with time right because here in the splunk you are only indexing different different events and without the time those events will not make any sense because the ultimate analytics will be on the based on the time when this events occurs and based on that you will be doing lot of analytics on that right so time picker is a very important input in splunk dashboards okay so to add a time picker you need to go to edit add input time okay if you see it created this one and if i click on here you will see there are a lot of presets presets options as well as relative real time options as well right so and it, it's a very versatile time picker so you can pick anything from here based on your need and the dashboard should be uh, refreshed based on that now i'll show you how to do that one as well so before that let's give a label as let's say time picker Okay. and we'll give the token name as time okay and default i'll say last seven days i'll click on apply okay if i click on save okay then i'll just go to edit and source to show you what has been added here if you see when i added in adding a time picker it created a input tag like this right with this token name and the label and time picker always generates two tokens one is the earliest another is the latest now here we are only giving the default values of the time picker right that means when the dashboard loads by default the time picker value will be last seven days now as i said time picker generates the earliest and latest events basically the time range now those time ranges I have to provide somewhere in my query right so that the query will be also running based on the same time range so to do that if you see previously when we you when we are using other input tokens like drop downs or multi select right we are passing to this query like in the query like this within dollar dollar sign the token name right general id or release year whatever it is now for time picker it is a little bit different okay now as you also remember from my previous video for multi select we have created a base search right and this base search has been used everywhere in my all my panels panel level right whatever is the pie chart or splunk table so what i will do here i will add the time picker related variables or tokens here in my base search only so that all the post processing search running at that panel level will be automatically refreshed based on the base search result so to do that this is how you do you create a tag called earliest same as this one when you see the time picker default right so i'll say i'll copy this one okay now here i have to pass the token i cannot keep it like seven days and now i will i have to pass the token and this is how the token works it will be in similar format dollar dollar and then the time token name so that means time time dot e a r l i e s t is the token name for earliest value okay similarly for latest it will be time dot latest value time dot latest value so this is how you pass time token to your search okay so let's click on save and filter reload the dashboard again okay so by default it is seven days now let me show you my data so this is my index right tmdb index now last 24 hours we do not have any data i think most of my events are from 19th of this month so that's why last seven days i am giving the full count let me see if i give last 15 minutes okay now 
as you also seen uh, we have introduced the submit button as well right so that's why if i show you here edit source for the time picker search when change by default has to be false okay so that it will go by the my submit button reload the dashboard so i'll select last 15 minutes then click on submit if you see the roll count is zero so all times it will give me for all all time data and i click on submit so it is it is uh, giving me the full count right now if you see for all even my uh, this drop downs are also going by my base search right is also going by my base search if you see the other drop downs like jenner or null so that's why based on the time range you are selecting the drop down may not show some result because maybe for last 15 minutes there is no records let's say 15 minutes if you see this these drop downs do not produce any record because those are populating from the same base search okay so now this is how you create time picker and pass the time picker value to that now let us discuss another aspect of it okay now sometimes it may need it that um, from this time picker it is very very it's a very complex and exhaustive time picker right for your end user you may not want to give them all these options suppose the real time one for your application it may not make sense in this case you may want to hide this real time one okay so there is a way to do it now before i do it i want to show you one thing okay i'll go to settings okay i'll go to user interface i'll go to time ranges okay i'll select my app tmdb from there now if you see for tmdb app it is showing me all these time ranges available for the time picker okay for the time picker so now let's say i want to hide this last four hours so i'll do disable okay so now if i go over here it will not work that is what i am trying to show it to you guys uh, if you see last four hours is still available i think i have done last four hours only yes so it is still available but if i go to search here if we click on this time picker now last four hours is not not available okay so the, the from this settings and this time ranges is only works when you are in the search of that app okay but when you are when are you at the dashboard level it it does not work so to do that what you need to do you need to create a css file so that when the dashboard loads the css runs and it will hide that particular options okay so now i'll just enable it now let's do that mm. so to do that we'll do we'll create a css file okay now before i create the css file let me show you this one how to how to know what to hide let's say i want to hide this whole real time portion of it from here okay so i'll right click on it i'll click on inspect okay now if you see if i if you mouse over on it it will show you the corresponding results so for me i want to hide this full div okay so if i mouse over on it, it it is actually showing me here it is actually selecting this whole real time div right and if you see its data test is real time column okay so we'll be using this one in our css file okay so we'll set div okay then like this and we'll copy this one and we'll be applying to all that means we'll start with this one real time column okay so i already created this one so i'll just copy paste then display equals to none okay so what i'm trying to do here is i am for any div which start with real time column i am just 
saying do not display it okay i'll save this to a let's say hide time picker or custom time picker custom time picker save so now to include a css file what you need to do is you need to copy it okay first of all this is a text file i don't want to save it as a text file i'll language c css then save it desktop custom time picker okay so i'll copy this css file i'll go to my tmdb app splunk home etc apps tmdb and similar way the way you are saving your javascript file similar way inside the app server static you will save your css file okay then copy the name of the css file come over here to your dashboard okay and then go to edit edit source what i'll do is st y l a s h w e c style sheet equals to this one this is how you include scss in your dashboard okay click on save and we need to restart this restart the my splunk here so i'll go to server control and restart splunk okay and it may happen that because css and js are are, are, are cached in the browser right we will try to do one round of cache clearing as well if it is not working so let it restart so in the meantime just wanted to give you one another information the way i have included the time picker and i have passed the token to the searches right it only works when your time picker is going by the underscore time that's the default behavior of your time picker okay now at the end of this video i'll give you the link uh, which i have previously created where you can configure your time picker to go by any of the date fields you have in your data okay so watch out for that one and uh, and i think it, i created a long time back those videos so i think it has four parts maybe i'll be giving the four parts links as well okay so let's go to our tmdb app go to our dashboard first dashboard okay so now by default is last seven days and if i click on here it's real time is still showing up let me clear my cache now splunk will be restarting have to re-log in again okay first dashboard let me see the css file once the css looks good let me see my xml okay i have to give css dot css over here okay click on save reload the dashboard again okay if you see now the real time is gone now okay the similar way you can do it for other other portion of portion of the presets and other relative times as well okay now if you want to do it for sim, uh, for one by one that is also you can do in that case you have to remember that go to inspect and give that corresponding name here okay if you see data test week to date if you want to just uh, hide the week to date one okay so this is how uh, you can customize the time picker and also i wanted to show you one thing it is uh, only for the real time one if you go to settings access control okay sometimes if you see uh, uh, if you just hide as well there is other way user can do it do the real time searches to completely remove the the role or basically the um, uh, basically the access to run a real time search what you need to do you need to go to real roles and for that corresponding user or role name 
let's say currently I am admin of my system. I am going to admins. Okay. And if you see in the capabilities, there is a capability called real time search. Okay. RT search. And I think schedule RT search. You have to remove both these two from the list of capabilities. Okay. In that case, people will not be able to run any kind of real time searches from their dashboards. Okay. So this is how uh, you can work with your time picker. And as I said, I will be giving you the link uh, of the new uh, the videos I have created for the time picker by any any of the date fields so and at, at, at the end of my video so look out for that one as well okay see you in next video